예. 예. All right, so yes, this is the new project car. A uh, quick little backstory on this bad boy. This is a 1979 Ford Pinto. Uh, it's been in my family for quite a while, actually. My mom used to drive this car. My uncle drove it. My grandpa drove it. And uh, there were some engine troubles with it uh, in the early 2000s. I believe it was like a bonehead gasket or something. And uh, it got parked out of my parents' place. And it sat there for around 18 years. I think it was parked around 02. And uh, so ever since I was in high school and I could learn to drive, started getting into cars and all that, um, I really wanted to do something with this thing and uh, never had the time and money and motivation and all that stuff. Well, I finally got some of those things and uh, got it pulled from its resting spot. Uh, a couple of my buddies came over and we pulled the engine. I started stripping some of it down and stuff and then got it to my garage here so I can work on it a lot more. And uh, so this is where it's going to be for now and uh, until we get it running. So. Basically, the end goal is just to get it running. Um, I bought an engine, I'll show you that, and uh, get it back on the road. That's just my goal for this year. Um, it's probably going to be a relatively long-term project. I'm probably going to build this thing up and then have it for forever, do other builds with it, engine swaps, who knows what. And uh, so, anyway, let's get you caught up to how it got to here. So. Here she is. So this is where she's been sitting for the last 18 years, I think. At least. <laughs> it was driven into this spot. Um, but I can tell you it ain't going to drive away from this spot. <laughs> so, first order of business here is going to be to pull off these old wheels and tires and uh, throw on some other ones that'll hold air. So we'll get into some of the details of it later, um, but that's what we're gonna do first. Three hours later. All right, so a little status update. Um, I brought my extra set of Miata wheels and I ordered some 4x108 to 4x100 st uh, spacers, adapters. Um, they're only an inch thick and uh, so the issue is the hub bore size on the Pinto is um, quite a bit bigger than the Miata wheels. And um, so basically if this were, you know, two inches or maybe even the three inch spacer, um, we could get them on there and to work. But the hub bore on the Miata wheel is just too small to fit onto the Pinto spindles. Um, so, and maybe they'd work in the back because it's a smaller spindle. But anyway, so our plan of attack was to throw these on there, which all have, which have four good, um, tires that hold air um, but what we are going to do now is we have these set of Mustang wheels Mustang pony wheels um, which I'm not a big fan of but uh, the they have a couple drag slicks <laughs> or uh, drag radials on them and uh, we bought them a long time ago a few years ago um, and they still I'm pretty sure will hold air they're flat right now um, so we got those on the back two wheels we were able to bring the forks of the tractor underneath and lift up the back basically from the rear end, put those on, um, and I can get my little jack underneath there on the front end. And uh, so we got uh, we got those two in the back that we're pretty sure will hold air, um, and the front wheels, we're going to find two out of the four uh, Pinto wheels that I have. Um, all the tires are pretty shot, but we're hoping two of them will hold at least air for a small amount of time. Um, and uh, so then we can pull it out of here and uh, maybe even get it up to my dad's shop uh, to start kind of pulling things apart and cleaning it up and tearing out all the nastiness but yeah that's what we're gonna that's what we've got going now three more hours later all right well we got it up in the shop hooked it up to the back of the tractor and was able to pull it up and then the last little bit uh, we just pushed it in from the rear bumper there. Uh, we couldn't get any of the four tires to hold any air, so we dragged it on uh, flat tires. wasn't too bad. Um, it kind of sucked. <laughs> we were dragging it through a bunch of mud, so uh, those tires and everything just got covered in mud. But 
here it is. So basically my plan right now is going to be uh, clean up a lot of the uh, crap and stuff that's in there. Uh, obviously there's it's been sitting for you know 18 years or whatever. There's a bunch of mouse turds and uh, you know a whole bunch of just nasty crap in there. So um, we're going to try to start cleaning some of it up and uh, then get the engine ready to pull out and hopefully it can pull the engine and leave it here um, and then once I kind of clean probably strip most of this interior out and uh, clean out a lot of the really nasty stuff um, then we can uh, put it on a trailer hopefully on some actual wheels and tires that'll hold air <laughs> and uh, then pick take it up to my house um, bring it to the piece parts garage and start working on it from there oh back for some more work on the Pinot um, Couple weekends ago, like the clip you just last saw, we got it pushed into the shop um, and we started stripping stuff down. So we got the seats out, the carpet out, found some more holes in the floorboard, um, got the back seats out and some of that stuff out, even though there's more shit in it now. Uh, we got the disgusting headliner out of there um, and tried to pop some of the roof back. Uh, we had goats climb all over it at one point, kind of whatever. Um, so then, we're getting the engine ready to pull, so we got the cherry picker set up here, got all the accessories and stuff out of the way, um, we're waiting on a, a chain right now to hook up the cherry picker, but we got uh, pretty much everything disconnected, we got the headers disconnected here, the trans cross member is unbolted there, just kind of sitting there, uh, we cut the exhaust off, we got the AC compressor, for some reason I had AC. Um, alternator out of the way, some of the other shit out of the way, radiator out of the way, all that stuff. Alright, so now I'm going to give you just a quick little walk around of some of the stuff about it. So first off, the wheels, uh, these are obviously not the stock wheels, uh, they were, it had the stock wheels on it when it was sitting out at my parents' house, so you'll, you would have seen those on there, and um, these wheels, uh, they're actually Jegs Racing 15 by 8s for a 4x100 pattern, that's what this car is, and um, I found them on Facebook Marketplace for 100 bucks for all four, no center caps, but uh, they had like been mounted and then thrown on the car and they didn't like them or they didn't fit or something and so then the guys sold them really cheap they're cast aluminum so they're relatively lightweight um, I'm happy with the way they look too and then um, uh, so four tires for 50 bucks that held air that's situated um, this car currently uh, has a rear end that's out of a Mustang 2 I believe uh, it has a T5 transmission in the passenger seat because <laughs> I've started taking stuff apart. Uh, but anyway, that's a good T5. It's out of a uh, turbo coupe, uh, Thunderbird turbo coupe. And then uh, it had a uh, 2.3 inline four cylinder, which is, uh, it was carbureted, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I got another engine out of a Ranger. Same block and everything, but it's fuel injected. Uh, so anyway, that's what we'll be putting in. Uh, this car was obviously originally orange, been covered in primer for 18 years. It's starting to come away. Windshield is uh, pretty far gone. Come to the other side here, it's way worse. <laughs> um, we had some huge hail uh, probably about 10 years ago now. Um, and it did a number on this car since it was sitting outside. Hail, dan uh, hail damaged windshield really bad. And then uh, the roof was pretty caved in from hail and also from goats climbing on it. And yeah, long story. Uh, <laughs> so other than that, um, the car's not really too bad. It's pretty rusty, uh, but I don't really care, honestly. <laughs> this is the engine over here. Uh, I bought it out of a, a bought it from a guy that was doing a V8 swap into his Ranger, and uh, so this is a 2.3 four-cylinder out of a 92 Ranger. It is the eight-plug head. I didn't really want that, but I got a decent deal on it, so um, I'm gonna just run with this and see how it goes. 
I cleaned it up a little bit. I uh, took the valve cover off and painted it. Uh, I had some fun with it <laughs> and got a little creative and did some uh, orange and really sparkly metal flake in there. Uh, but other than that, I got to finish up getting the oil pan on there. That's the oil pan I'm going to use, so I got to clean that up. Uh, other than that, I have a decent clutch for it that'll go on the back of the engine, and then we can bolt the engine back up to the trans, slap that all back in the car, got some new motor mounts, all that fun stuff, and then um, we'll just have to worry about wiring. When I bought the engine, I bought the whole Ranger engine wiring harness, so I'll be taking this harness, spreading it all out, and uh, getting rid of everything I don't need. So this harness here has plugins for the uh, headlights and turn signals on the Ranger and stuff. I'm going to keep that separate. I could use this wiring, but I'm going to keep the engine and the chassis harness as two separate things. And uh, my plan for that is that if I ever wanted to engine swap it again later or make a stand standalone uh, engine management or something for a turbo, uh, then that would be way easier. I can change the engine harness and the chassis harness will be completely unaffected other than the few things that it needs to communicate with each other, you know, starter signals and things like that. And uh, so that's that. Like you saw, we got the engine pulled out. I've started pulling some of the uh, wiring harness out here. Most of it is pretty crusty and uh, pretty chewed up from mice. So I'm probably not gonna use any of it. I'll probably just pretty much throw all of it away. Uh, yeah, there you can see that they've chewed through a lot of the battery cable. Um, so uh, some of the other things I pulled out was some of the AC stuff. This car had AC. I don't really care about it, so I'm going to pull all that out. Um, I took the battery box out here, with, if you could even call it that. There's hardly anything left of it. Just rusted away. So then I'm going to need to do, you know, get new brakes. But I think I can make the throttle cable from the Pinto work with the engine and clean up some more there. But yeah, and I'll probably try to clean up the subframe a little bit as well, but um, not too bad so far. So at the back, kind of tight here, I don't have a whole lot of space in my garage, but um, you guys saw the, the lights earlier, and um, I'm going to be doing something really cool with those. I mean, I know you guys saw me build these lights for this, so you know what I can do, um, <laughs> but it'll, it'll be something sequential and uh, some LEDs and stuff obviously update it to uh, some newer modern technology instead of uh, these old incandescent bulbs in here. Uh, but I went ahead and pulled off the rear bumper because uh, it, it was broken and it's ugly. It sticks out a foot. And... Anyway, so so I got a fuel cell from a buddy of mine. Uh, this one happens to be a uh, you know one of the composite ones. It's filled with foam in there, which is awesome. I believe it's like a 16-gallon which is pretty big, honestly. I think it's probably bigger than the stock tank that's under there, um, but uh, it was it was cheap from a buddy and it's like brand new, it's never been used. So um, I'll have to make basically a new fuel system uh, because it's fuel injected as well. So I'll need to get an inline pump and filters and all that. And uh, my plan is to basically, you know, cut out some of the floor and uh, build a flat plate for the fuel cell to sit down. If not level with the floor, but maybe sticking up a little bit or something along those lines um, and that should be pretty good. We pulled all the carpet out, threw that away because it's disgusting. Uh, the seats are still at my parents house. I don't know if I'm going to reuse those or not or get some buckets or something along those lines. Um, but I've started pulling some of the interior out and just kind of shoving it back here. As you can see the uh, floor's got a couple holes there, hole there, a little bigger hole over there some more holes, some more holes, um, some more holes, yeah, it's a little rusty, but we should be able to uh, weld in a plate over that or uh, cut it some out and weld in a plate. Uh, I kind of want to do subframe connectors anyway, which basically is just putting a channel or a tube along the frame rail because the OEM frame rail stops somewhere along in here, um, so basically subframe connectors would connect it all the way to the back. Uh, which makes the car way more sturdy and rigid. But basically, what I'm working on right now is uh, getting the dash pulled out. Uh, there's a bolt over there. The four bolts holding the steering column up, P took those out. There's a bolt there and a bolt there to hold that center support. I believe there's another bolt under here that I haven't gotten to yet. 
and then there's a handful of bolts across the top there along the windshield. On later cars, I believe in 79 and 80, uh, the windshield is glued in, so there's a rubber seal on the inside there that hides those screws. And the only way I found to be able to get to those screws was with a quarter inch universal drive and then a uh, quarter inch socket on the end of there to get to those screws right there. I tried and tried with just some extensions and stuff and I couldn't get it to work because of the angle of the windshield. Obviously I need to pull the windshield out anyway, but I don't have the correct tools to do that and I wanted to get the dash out before and anyway, this seems to work so I'm gonna go along with that and uh, try to see if I can get the dash out. That's probably gonna be just about it for this episode. Um, I might do a time lapse of pulling the dash out real quick, but um, otherwise that's pretty much it. And uh, let me know what you guys think of this project. Let me know if you think I'm crazy or, uh, <laughs> I don't know, give me your best shot at making fun of Pintos. I know everybody shits on them, uh, but personally I love them. I think they're great. So uh, that's why I wanna build one. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace out.